Okay, this video is to show the whole process of programming one of these buttons and some of the I.O. on the back side of the machine and the cabinet. Uh, for this video, we're going to look at one example. So this is our auto door. It's got a little servo system that controls it. So to open and close the door, hit that button. So that's all easy. We've already done that, but what we don't have is a good reset system and a good indication that the servo system is healthy for the outer door. So what we're going to do is make this button be a reset. So I've got the buttons taken off, they're getting engraved right now. But this button will be the reset and that light right there, kind of like what that light is like, that light will be the servo is okay light. So this is how we do it. We're gonna start by pushing in the e-stop, and then we're gonna hit this little arrow key. This is a uh, this is a Doosan controller, but it, I believe it's a Fanuc OI. Uh, anyway, there's a shortcut there. You can get there by hitting this key and then arrow over once, and then go to settings. You spell setting wrong, but that's all right. And then I just hit edit enable, turn it to yes, program enabled, uh, turn it to yes, just by hitting the keys. Yes, no, yes, no, yes. And then we're gonna go to ladder, and then we're gonna pause for a second. We're gonna go over to a book, then we want to look at the whoops. We want to look at the button map. So let me use into here. This is hard to read, but the one we want to do is R7.3. If I can do this, yeah, look at that. And R27.3. So uh, the reason we picked R7.3 because. This one, and this one, and that one are all free, but this one has a bunch of uh, I.O. written about it already, and this one hardly doesn't. So we can manipulate this stuff easier than we can the rest of, this, uh, of the buttons. So we're going to use it first. Uh, we've already used these and then some up here. Um, at any rate, so we're going to go there and we're going to start by saying R27.3 is an input that controls an output. That output will be this one. So we're in, uh, let me take a couple steps back. This is the uh, electrical manu manual for this Doosan machine that we're running. Uh, they're pretty much gonna be all the same style, no matter what brand to go with um, but we had a whole bunch of options you can see that this page is, is fairly large um, let me show you why we chose this one In just a sec all right so we're here this is the control board that we're interested in here. If you look right there, the address of the whole board is XT107, and that's important because that tells you in the drawing where you're at in the machine. Each of these have their own little uh, addresses, so this group of outputs and inputs is uh, 106. They all have their own little name. This one is kind of like a user output that I find that is most convenient to pick and choose from. All right, so let's zoom out a little bit. Here's what we're looking at. They're calling this X or CB. The other one I think was XB or something, but they, they kind of vary. We have two Doosan mills that we bought at about the same day, and uh, they have different numbering schemes. But the letter or the sorry, the lettering schemes are different, but the numbers are the same. Uh, so you kind of have to play it by ear, and then some of the stuff is in Per English, which is a little difficult to understand, but numbers are easy. X's are inputs, Y's are outputs. 
this is telling you that the seventh bit, you got seven, six, four, three, two, one, zero. All of these give you an address. So this is Y7.7. And then the other one that we'll use is one that isn't being used by anybody, which is X10.6, which is also easy to find on that, uh, that uh, 107 circuit board that I just showed you. Then, uh, so what we want in, in conclusion is the button here to turn on this output and this input turns on that light. That makes sense? So that's, that's the goal of what we're doing. So the servo will give us this signal and we'll give this signal to the servo and we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here we are uh, where I left you off. He stops in, we've gone through the settings and made it so that we can edit this ladder. Sorry, I'm short, this pendant's quite tall and it's very loud in here, but you'll get the idea. All right, so um, first thing we're gonna do is go search for, let me hit operator, search menu, and then I'm gonna type in Y7, 7.7, we're gonna search. You can see that it's already used. We don't wanna create two outputs for the PLC to turn off and then on and then off and then on again in a split second, because then it won't do what we're supposed to, and, and usually the PLC gets mad. So, first thing we're gonna do, because this is fixture four unclamped solenoid, we don't need that. So we're gonna just delete the whole run. So I'm gonna exit this, I'm gonna go to edit, for a second and then I'm gonna say delete. So I'm gonna delete this whole rung that has our our fit in it or output. So I deleted it. Now we're gonna go do the same thing for the other address which is X10.6. I'm gonna go search menu X10.6 search then it says address is not found. That's good. Now we're gonna go, uh, just because I, I like stuff to be together, we're gonna go in the ladder where this stuff is. So we're gonna cheat. We're gonna go over to here and I'm gonna look at this button layout and I'm gonna search R8.1 just to get us in the right neighborhood. So I'm going to hit uh, R8.1, search, and then we're in the neighborhood of where all this stuff is. So I'm just going to just going to create a new net right here. So hit exit. Now I'm going to create a net, which is uh, a rung. They call their rungs nets. And then this one's going to be the one that turns on the light. So it'll be. Oops, it's easier to do if you say X 10.6, which is our input, goes to an output of uh, this address, which if you look here, go back to this page, is R 27.3. So the bigger number is the light, the lower number is the button, so R 27.3. And so I just type in R27.3. There you have it. Let get that thing out of the way. And then we're going to create another net, which is uh, normally closed. And it's going to be Y7.7. So this is the... Oh, whoops. I don't know. Hold on. Uh, it's going to be R7.3, which is the button of, of our light, and then we're going to output to a Y7.7. So here we go. This is the basic structure of it. We read that okay. Now, what we want to do is 
exit this edit. And you can see our two rungs right here. Now notice how the rungs have uh, pretty much useless names. So the, these tags are not helpful at all to help you understand what's going on. In fact, it would be even more confusing because you're, you're looking at a fixture and clamp solenoid. That's not gonna help. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into this little side key, go into settings, Oh, hold on, hold on. It wants us to exit the edit. Oops, he's running. I'm going to update it. I'm going to write it in flash. Yes. We hit settings again. We're going to go over to uh, figure parameters. Number two is machine signal interface. And then we're going to arrow over once. And go to symbol. So now we can edit these by hitting the operator and then edit. And then it's going to say, hey, do you want to stop the program? Let's stop the uh, PMC again, or the PLC. Now, you can search. So let's start with, uh, got back it in first. Let's start with, with uh, X10.6. So we're going to search. Uh, and it's called ASDO, which isn't helpful. So we're going to call it something else. We're going to zoom, just like you would on a, on a run. And we're gonna name it uh, Auto Door. Let's see, this is the input that tells the light to come on. So let's do AD.RDY. AD.RDY has an Auto Door ready. Hit Enter. And then we're gonna do AUTO space door space. Ready. Enter. Perfect. And we're going to say Alter. Have it. Let's do the next one. We're going to do uh, Y717. Search. Zoom. This is the signal that gives the servo its enable it. Man. So this has to always be on. So this is, uh, we'll call it AD.ENDL as an enable. And then we're going to call it uh, AUTO or ENDL for short. Output. Enter, alter. Now let's go do uh, R7.3 and R27.3. So let's start with R7.3. Search. So it used to be screw conveyor reverse, which I wish this thing had, but probably she doesn't. I'm gonna zoom. I'm gonna call it. Uh, so to be clear, this is the button press the button this is that signal so let's call it uh, auto door M button or we'll just call it a D dot e and B button doesn't really matter what you call it as long as it can be used somewhere else and then a U T O So effectively, this button will become a reset. You're not enabling it, you're, you're actually releasing the enable and letting it re-enable itself, and that is what resets it. So we're calling it a reset. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to name this RST. Alter. Now, uh, we need R27.3, so... Let's uh, type in R27.3 and do a search. This thing isn't found, so we're going to make a new entry. That means this, this button or that light right there doesn't have an address associated with it in the PMC. 
or it doesn't have a name associated with it. So we're going to say new entry, we're going to give it an R27.3, we're going to say AD.L, um, well let's call it enable, DMC LAN. There might be some rules associated with what you can name this. They never give it spaces, which I'm thinking that's important. Uh, I'm no professional at this, but we have a long okay. And then we're going to say auto or auto door enable lamp. Add. Okay, that are that's the four signals or bits that we were interested in. Oops. Looks like uh, so I didn't hit enter after I hit that. And to fix it, we're just gonna cruise over and do it again. I'm sorry you have to watch this. Auto door and L and hit enter. Then hit alter, and there you have it. Okay, so now we exit, ex exit the edit. It's going to ask, hey, do you want to write it to Flash? I'm going to run the program for whatever reason. It was worth the button you have to press. Now we can go back to the ladder. Now everything makes a lot more sense. So the button. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. So it turned the, the PMC on, so now we can see what it's doing. But as I press this button, that goes on and off. And then the auto door enable signal goes on and off. Alright, so I think that's just about all you need to know. One thing that I like to do, I don't know that you care to see how the wires go together. One thing that I'd like to do is just make sure that the machine boots up again. Sometimes when I've messed with the PMC, it kind of has a connection fit. I'm going to have reset a couple of times. See, and the door has made a wiggle because we just turned them on again. And uh, there you have it. So that is how we program the reset and the status light view. Now let me show you how it works, just real quick. Okay, so I've got everything wired up. It's pretty simple, just in the bottom corner you can see my finger. Here's here, open it. All the while this light's on. I close it again and then I'm going to stop it with my hand and fault the servo out. There we go. So now this light is out and now if I hit this button, the doors slowly go and find their home again. And then when they're done, so that is servo is enabled, everything's healthy. When they're done, the doors work again. That is how we do those uh, those little switches.